them, everybody? Yes. yes. It's still afternoon, right? It's already evening yet. No, um, first of all, let me just establish that I can also say Uncle John. So put me in the right category there. All right? So, Uncle John, I expect that you will say out of the mouth of babes when I'm finished. Let me just let you know. Uh, and I also want to start that I can claim Manchester as my own, as my neighbor is sitting right here, Kali from BD, and I'm sure there are others in here that I, we, our paths crossed by the world living in Mandeville. It was one of the few places that we lived for an extended period while we were growing up, because my mother was a traveling officer for Workers Bank. So we lived here for five years. So we claim Manchester as our home. I can't claim it like you, Daniel, but we're right on here. Okay? So, but, you know, Minister Bonte, Mayor, Brenda, Ramsey. How could I forget that Ramsey was the neighbor as well in Vancouver, so Ramsey. But, um, it's, it's good to be here. It's really, really good to be here today, fellow panelists. I chose to use the call this night because today it's about the conversation. <coughs> it's really about the conversation. And uh, Margaret Mead, uh, an American anthropologist, she, in one of her books, said, never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. In fact, it is, own, it is the only thing that has ever changed the world. Because it is through the conversation, it's through the ideas, the generation of ideas, and the exploration of ideas that change occurs. So today, we are having a conversation. I'm going to do most of the talking for the time being, and I'm hoping that you will do a lot of talking when we're finished. Because unless it is a conversation, we will not get the collective. You know, and when Brian spoke to the idea of the whole of Jamaica consulting on what is that thing that will be. It really, I said to myself, it's amazing how all things come together. Because at this point in the People's National Party, they have about two, uh, 2009, they launched the Progressive Agenda. And the basic underlying principle of the Progressive Agenda is participation accountability and responsibility. And if we could ever create that conversation in Jamaica, where all Jamaica chooses what it is that we are putting on that national platform, that would be ultimate participation. So we hold up, that's a vision, and we hold up vision. That's what we do, we hold up vision. Because when you hold that vision high up there, it is possible that that vision will become a reality. So today for me, I've chosen to use the progressive agenda to have the conversation through the progressive agenda with you all. Alright? Now, PMP was founded in 1938 on the basis of giving the country, of bringing a gift to the country, the gift of adult, universal adult suffrage and uh, independent governance. Alright? And we then moved on to major social reform. All of these are major gifts to the country. All right, we did this, and we have these gifts for the last 75 years. What for the next 25 years? What is going to be our gift to Jamaica? And by the People's National Party, we're not talking about leaders. Because when the People's National Party was formed, it was not formed from one person's idea. It was not formed merely from that small group of committed people, but there was conversation all across Jamaica, in the newspapers all across Jamaica. Everybody shows the gift that they are giving to this country, the whole of Jamaica, even those outside of Jamaica, through the progressive league. We chose the gift that we are giving to Jamaica. And we gave the gift to ourselves. Now we need to choose again. It is time for us to choose the gift for the next 25 years. You know, and in making that choice, I'm putting forward that 
when the button was passed to Michael from Norman. You know, the instruction was, you know, we've achieved the mission of adult suffrage and political independence and political independence. But we have not yet achieved the social and economic independence. We did some work on social independence, but not enough on economic independence. So there's something missing. Why? What is it? If we had gotten all of these things right on the social side, on the social reform, what's missing? Why we have not yet been able to have that growth over the last 45 years, that economic independence. All right? So, in 2005, Jamaica took the time to sit down through a consultative process to form Vision 2030. And we all choose Vision 2030. Everybody who speaks today speaks about Jamaica being the... So we all have to choose it more powerfully than that. Jamaica is the... To live, work, and raise your families. You don't sound so convinced. Jamaica is to be the... To live, work, and raise our families. That's what we chose. That's what we chose as Jamaica, right? And so, and a good friend of mine, always really always remind me that it's also the place of choice to retire. You know, not just work, but it's also the place of choice to retire. All right? So, what is gonna be our gift? The progressive agenda for the party must not be confused with the manifesto. Oh, we had a manifesto for the five years. Progressive agenda is like a deeper than that. Right? The progressive agenda is like a code of ethics. You know, when Professor Arendt spoke about what are the values that we all uphold together, that's really what it's more like. It gives us the it gives us the basis on which we can choose our policies. It gives us the basis on which to make some choices. Now, it says, progressive agenda is a strategic mix of principles, policies, and pathways to achieve greater inclusion and equity for the Jamaican people. It enables sustained economic growth and development in order to enhance wealth creation and social harmony for the benefit of all Jamaicans at home and abroad. The progressive energy, the strategic means of principles, policies, and pathways. Now today I want to talk about the principles and pathways, not the policies. Right? What are the principles and pathways that the progressive agenda puts forward? Now the principle of participation, accountability, and responsibility. If we've it's called our power principle. That's what we want to implement in Jamaica going forward. We don't have enough of it. Participation, accountability, and responsibility. It's the principle on which we want to be on the forward. So, it also states, right, and another part of the pathway that is at core to, the, to this whole development that we're going forward is that every Jamaican must be the best that they can be. So that's why my presentation is time be the best that we can be. Because if we are the best that we can be, then we will participate. We will be accountable and we will be responsible. But we really have to work out how do we be the best that we can be. What does that really mean? How are we going to get there? Right? So, as a progressive agenda states, now, Quoting from a progressive agenda because I want us to remember that this document is a living document. It's not a document that is written and put down for posterity. It's a document that we are to reference because it went through a whole process of consultations to get us to where we are here today. And when we do the work, we must reference the work and remind ourselves of what we agreed to. And as a party, we agree that when we as politicians, teachers, policemen, taxi drivers, workers, or students hold ourselves to the highest standards and give account of ourselves 
You know what it says? It says, we give account of ourselves. Not you give account of anybody else. You give account of a taxi driver. You don't give account of a teacher. If you are a doctor, you give account of yourself as a doctor. If you are a politician, you give account of yourself as a politician. If you are a policeman, you give account of yourself as a policeman. So when we begin to give account of ourselves, the development possibilities are unlimited. Because if you choose it, then you will have it. And if you are doing what you are going to do, it must happen. If we start focusing on what somebody else is not doing, right, then we will have more time to focus on what we choose to do and actually do it. This is the key. When we take, when we start making excuses and blaming others, Daniel spoke to this eloquently. When we stop making excuses and blaming others, we empower ourselves. When we take responsibility for our shortcomings, we will march onward with a deeper and greater resolve to be the best that we can be. And it is possible. You say goal is being the best that he can be on that track. It is possible. And he's not using any drugs and declaring that. <laughs> Okay. So the conversation we need to have about the next 25 years is how we shift our, our, our behavior as Jamaicans to make our work. You know, Professor Harris spoke to us about the national spirit and the national identity and how we define ourselves, that we choose how we define ourselves. Alright? And so, and that has spoke to us about the fact that the power lies within us, not within our leaders. That's a new citizen. So, I'm asking you, what do you choose? Today, eh? Not solely in our leaders. Leaders have a role to play. Not solely in our leaders, the correct terminology. However, as a leader, all of us, as leaders, in our own right, in our own sphere, must recognize that the power lies within. The power to choose who the leader is going to be for particularly lies within us. It all lies within us. So, I'm going to ask you this question. Is a Jamaican, when you look at our Jamaican identity, is a Jamaican a chill or a creative person? This is a real question to ask us. Dr. Andrea put it to us. It's a real question. You understand? But if we are creative people, then we have something to change because we have such journalist behavior that we use our creative behavior to cause. So we have to make some different choices. If we are not the general, but the creative person. So I'm going to ask you, is a Jamaican a violent and angry person? or an expressive person. So the question is, if we don't choose to be, violent, be seen as a violent and angry person, then we have to change our things around how we behave. We can't be expressive, we can't use our hand and, as I do, all the time in the conversation. However, we don't have to speak in an angry way. We don't have to express dissatisfaction every time in an angry way. We don't have to always be making somebody wrong. We don't have to do it in an angry way. It's all a choice, right? So, if we want to change our identity as Jamaican, because we have very strong identity across the world, would we say so? Very, very strong. I was watching some comedians the other day. He says, Jamaicans are angry people. You understand? We don't want that identity. We want Jamaicans are powerful people then I want us to read this story, right? A young boy says, and this is an American, uh, Native American, um, one of those stories that you tell your children so they can understand it. Okay. A young boy asked his grandfather how he became such a good man. 
His grandfather answered, I said, I have two worlds inside me, and so do you. One with his kind, gracious, generous, selfless and brave, while the other is evil, violent, selfish, destructive and relentless. They are locked in battle and neither will stop until the other is destroyed. The boy looked horrified and in desperate tone begged, but grandfather, which one will win? The wise man looked at his grandson and intensely said, The one I feed. What are we feeding as Jamaicans? What do we choose to feed today as Jamaicans, as individuals that are going to cause Jamaica to go forward? So, I will say to you that Michael Manley said in his book, In the Politics of Change, government today must not only reflect the politics which have been described as the art of the possible. It must reflect also the pursuit of the impossible. So that our own capacity may be confirmed for ourselves and self-doubt banished. So I'm saying that to you with that. Whilst we are choosing who we are being as Jamaicans, we are not to shoot down here. We are not just to go for what is obviously possible. We are to go for what seems impossible. We are to believe it is possible to transform our country into an expressive country rather than an angry country. We are to believe this and we are to work hard towards this. Otherwise, we will not have it. Right? So, and I believe and I know we can do it because we know as part of that Jamaican identity is that we are exceptional and we do things that people do not do. That's what we do. We do things that most people cannot do. We have bombs their teams coming from a, a tropical country. That's what we do. We don't do anything ordinary. Nothing at all. So, are we going to be a fail state? Hell no. Sorry. No. We are not going to be a fail state. Because we don't choose fail state. But we can't just say it. We actually have to change our behavior. We have to own it. We have to own our growth agenda. We have to own our own transformation as people to become the new Jamaica. Because it is not the fact that we have not had growth plans for the last 30 years or 40 years or the right growth plan that has stopped Jamaica. It is not the fact that a political leader has caused us to be, what was your fancy word again? You had a nice word about how we are as Jamaicans now. Instead of being united, we are hegemonic dissolution. Thank you. It's not because we have hegemonic dissolution. You understand? It is because, as Jamaicans, we have not chosen to be the best that we can be. And we have not powerfully chosen together that we know that each one of us have a role to play in creating Jamaica as the place of choice to live. It is because we have not truly emancipated ourselves from mental slavery. And as Beverly kind of and by the way, I have to be your mind. Stepmother is here, you know? Beverly. <laughs> right, as Beverly mind he says, it says, whilst others may free our bodies, none but ourselves can free our minds. None but ourselves. And I put it to you that we have not grown for the last 40 years, not because we haven't had the right plan, not because we haven't had the right leaders, but because we have not freed our minds and chosen to feed the world inside of us that would cause us to be the best that we can be. Thank you.